In this session, I want to show you how to get started in Mastercam 2021. It's their latest version of Mastercam. I'm going to show you this from the Mastercam demo version. It's a home learning edition, which is available for free download from the Mastercam website. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Just click on it or copy it into your browser. Fill out some information right here on the right and then go ahead and download the software and then do a simple install. Then you can open it up. It will not allow you to post out code, but you can draw, you can draw solids. You can actually do toolpaths in both milling and turning. It just will not allow you to post out code. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so when you open up Mastercam, the CAD section will probably be a gray color. Now, if you want to change that, and I, I want to change that for this session to the color white, what you do is you go to the File tab, select Configuration, then select Colors right here from this menu right here. And the first thing we want to do is uncheck this box that says Use Gradient Background. Uncheck that. And then go to background gradient start that currently is set to black. We're going to change that to white, then click OK. That is the check mark right here. Click OK, click yes, and that will be the background color in your CAD section. So that's the color we're going to work with. First thing I want to make sure that you understand is that we have a crosshair right here that can be toggled on and off and that's located on the view tab right here at the top okay then this icon show axis you can turn that on and off now you can also do that with the f9 button on your keyboard all right so to get started we're going to the wireframe tab up here and then we're going to select rectangle and it opens up this box right here and always look for the prompt to see what Mastercam wants. So it says select a new position for the first corner. Now that, that position can be anywhere, but I'm going to let it snap, let my cursor snap to the intersection of the crosshair. Click there and then drag my mouse and then click again. And there is the start of my rectangle, which I now want to give some dimensions. So let's start with 8 inches and then click in this field minus 4 enter you can see it updating and then click OK and when I say OK look for the check mark right here and when you hover over it it says OK and that finishes your drawing okay or that finishes that operation then you right click and use this button right here that says fit now fit brings your geometry and centers it up on your cat screen, okay? Then you can use the center mouse button, roll it towards you, and you can zoom out. So now the color of the geometry is light blue, and that, that's just hard to see. So we're gonna change that to black. So what you wanna do is highlight that. Now there's two ways to select the geometry. You can hold your shift key down, and then click one of the legs, and it automatically changes the geometry. The second way to do that is to click down below and just drag a window and then click again. Now, of course, it deselected that, but if I want to select that again, I draw a window around it, select it, then we go to the Home tab and there is this icon right here that says wireframe color. All I did was hover over it and it tells me what it is. There's a little drop down menu next to that. I'll open that up and I'm going to make it black. Okay, so that changed the color to black. Now, that just changed the color of the existing. I have not changed the actual color. So I'm going to click on that again and select it. So anything that I draw going forward will be black. All right, so now that we have some geometry on the screen, let's talk about how we can view the geometry. So first of all, you can 
roll your center mouse button and that allows you to zoom in and out. If you hold your center mouse button down and you push your mouse forward, you can see you're rolling your model. Okay. Then also, if you right click and click top, it brings it back to perpendicular view. Okay. Then also, there's other views available. We're looking at top currently. Then there is front. So click on front and you're looking at the front edge. It's hard to see because it's a it's a flat plane or a flat model. Then we can also select right. Okay. Again, if you hold your center mouse right button down, you can roll it and just see that easier. So right click and top. Let's go ahead and go to the transform tab. We're going to click translate. Now, what does the prompt say? Translate, select entities to translate. So again, I'm going to hold my shift button down, select one of the legs and then change the whole box or the whole window. Then I click end selection. What I want to do, I have three different options here. I can copy, move or join. Now I want to give this some thickness or some 3D dimension. So we're looking at this view from the top. And so we want to translate that rectangle down minus, let's say, two inches and click enter. Now, notice I got it set to copy. If I select move, it actually moves my geometry and pushes it down minus two inches. Now, if I click on join, then it takes the top or my original shape copies it two inches below but also gives me these corners so it actually turns it into a box so that's what we're going to go with now when i click ok i want you to notice there is a red color and there's a purple color and that's not on purpose the red color shows the original shape okay and then the purple color is the resulting geometry from the operation that we just finished, which is the translation we did where we pushed that part or the, the top rectangle down two inches, made the connections at the corners, okay? And that is the resulting geometry, and that's always gonna show up in purple. Now, if I want to clear those colors, I can simply right click and take a look at this icon right here. I'm hovering my mouse over it, and it says clear colors. So when I click on it, it turns it back to my black, okay? All right, so now we can definitely see top view, front view. You can see the front of the box, right, and isometric. And then, of course, you have the additional views. You can look at the back. And you can see there's several more, so try them out. So let's go back to top view. All right, so the next thing I want to make you aware of is we are looking at a Z depth right here at the bottom of zero. And there's a toggle right here that, that can be switched from 2D to 3D. Okay, so right now we've been drawing in a Z zero plane. Now, what I want to show you is if I change that to one inch, so I just click on it and I enter one inch. If I draw, let's go back to wireframe. If I draw a rectangle and let's say I'm going to let it snap to this corner and then let it snap to the bottom corner. It looks like it's laying right on top of my existing geometry. But if I roll my mouse button, you can see that that rectangle is now located one inch above you had the box that we just created. So if I right click and go back to top view, now if I go back to the wireframe tab and I'll select line endpoints, it says specify the first endpoint. I'm going to let it snap to the upper left hand corner, click, and let it snap to the lower right hand corner and click. So now I've created a line. If I roll my model, you can see that is drawn at that one inch height. Okay. If I go back to the top, let's say I change this back to zero. 
and I draw the same line. I let it snap up here and snap down here. It looks like the exact same line, but right now it lands on the Z0 plane. Okay. Now, if I want to draw that line, and let's say I snap my cursor to that lower corner, that minus two inch plane, it still automatically snaps to Z0 because this is set at zero. If I want to draw and let it snap to that existing corner right there, instead of having to enter minus two inch, I can also toggle the 2D to 3D. Now I can let it snap to that corner right there, and then that corner, and it will actually draw it at minus two, even though this is set to zero. Now the 3D will only work snapping to existing geometry. Now, if I set this to 2D and I want to draw a line from, let's say, the upper corner down to the lower corner, it is still forced to the Z0 plane. As soon as I select 3D, it allows me to make a diagonal line. So if I click OK here and I go to the front view, you can see it allowed me to draw that diagonal line. So I want you to be aware what it is set at when you go to drawing your shapes. Okay. And know that 3D allows you a lot of flexibility in drawing or connecting geometry, but only it only allows you to really snap to existing intersections to make the connections, if that makes sense. All right, so I have removed the extra rectangle on all the lines. I just clicked on undo several times until all I had left was my box here. All right, so let's right click and go back to top view. Now, Mastercam is mainly used to create toolpaths. And usually, we want to make sure that our part is attached to an origin or that we have an origin that is located on the part. In this case, it's located at Z0 or the top of the part and then the upper left hand corner. Now, the drawing that you're going to be using doesn't always conveniently locate itself to the origin. Okay, remember under view, we can actually turn the origin off. And when you open up a customer drawing, this part may actually be way away from the origin. So I'm going to purposely move that away. So if you click on transform and click dynamic, it, sa it says, Select entities to move. So I'm going to draw a window, click end selection. You got this gnomon right here. If I roll it, I'm going to let it snap to this corner right here. Click. All right. Now, what's it say? Manipulate the geometry. Select the gnomon. Access to edit or press apply or double click the mouse to accept the results. So I'm going to let my mouse grab this little ball and I'm going to hold it, click and hold it and drag it away. You can see the X and Y values changing. I'm going to click. So now it is moved away from the origin, only in the X and Y. Now if I select the Z, now I can move it up or down in Z. So it's about 11 inches. I click and then click OK. Now, if I go to the front view, you can see that thing is hovering up in the air. And in the top view, it's way away from the origin. So now to get it back to origin really easy is make sure that you set the 3D, select Transform, and select Move to Origin. Now, it says here, select the point to translate from. So I'm going to select. First of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at the part correctly. I'm going to select the upper left hand corner there. Just let my cursor snap to it. And because it's in 3D right here, it automatically attaches that corner to my origin. So when I click top and front, you can see the origin is located at the top of the part and in the upper left hand corner. That's how simple it is to move your part to the origin 
where all your X and Y values come from. All right, that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one where I continue showing you how to get started in Mastercam 2021. Thanks for watching.